When part of your mission is to bring fresh water to people who need it, you and your Lone Star Drill can get the job done quickly and reliably. Let's look at who will help you achieve your objective. Start assembling your crew by naming the foreman. He'll oversee the job site, focusing on the big picture as well as the paperwork. From double checking the packing list to ensuring all of the mobilization supplies are ready, from buckets to fuel to chlorine, the foreman keeps it all in line. Next, designate your lead driller. He'll supervise the drilling operations and be the go-to person on the job. The lead driller's experience will help with training and supervising others on the job site. His expertise will be invaluable in operating the drill, monitoring the water circulation, evaluating the mud, and guiding the crew. Your lead driller is going to need a right-hand man, and that's the assistant driller. He provides hands-on support during all drilling operations. From setting up and organizing the job site to monitoring drilling, the assistant driller makes sure things run smoothly from start to finish. One more essential team member is the helper. This crew member will follow and give directions to make sure the job gets done right. The helper works alongside local workers and supervises them in pit digging, water gathering, shoveling cuttings from the well area, and keeping the strainer clean. Now that your team is in place, we can get you and your crew to work. Start by preparing the job site. Rope off an area large enough to work comfortably while keeping onlookers at a safe distance. Unload the tools and equipment, being careful to place everything on dry ground. Then, position four 55-gallon drums near the drill site and fill each with water and a cup of chlorine. The local workers will need to keep the drums full throughout the drilling process. Next, dig a starting hole by hand to prepare for the borehole. Make a four inch diameter hole six inches deep where you're going to drill the well. You'll also need to dig two pits about five feet away, one settling pit and one suction pit. These two pits are essential for keeping the mud clean and dropping the cuttings created in the drilling process. The pit should be large enough to hold three times the volume of the hole you're about to drill and should be lined with plastic if the soil is sandy. Next, dig a six inch deep channel from the well guide hole to the first pit. Once that's ready, set up your equipment. Position the drill base over the end of the trench and raise the mast until it's fully upright. Secure the pin in the transport rest. Then install and tighten two three-quarter inch bolts at the mast's base. Lower the jack stands and level the rig over the drill site. Install the anchor kit to stabilize the trailer. Then place the mud pump near the pit and begin connecting all of the hoses. First, connect the rotary drive hydraulic hoses to the quick disconnects on the rotary control valve. Then attach the hoses from the rig to the mud pump. Before drilling, it's necessary to check the pH balance of the drilling mud. If balances are off, gradually add soda ash until the correct level is achieved. Ensure the operator understands all the controls and then get ready to drill. Before starting the mud pump, place the three-way valve in the bypass position. Begin by filling the pits with water and priming the mud pump. Start the pump and let it run until the fluid circulates. Apply pipe joint compound to the threads of the swivel stem, the first drill pipe, and the pilot bit. Raise the rotary head to within six inches of the top stops, taking extra care not to jam the shuttle plate into the stops. Assemble the drill pipe and pilot bit and swivel stem by hand. Then, lower the rotary drive head until the bit contacts the ground. Place the three-way valve in the drilling position allowing drilling fluid to flow through the bit. Move the rotary valve lever to start the bit rotating in the clockwise direction. Turn the pressure control valve knob to the fully counterclockwise or open position and move the draw works valve lever into the down position, holding it open. The head should not move at this time. Use the pressure control valve to slowly begin the drilling rotation and monitor the cuttings to make sure the feed force suits the soil. Continue drilling until the rotary head comes to the bottom of its travel. 
You can close the pipe slip jaws around the pipe as a guide, but be sure to open the jaws before the breakout lugs on the pipe reach the jaws. Take cutting samples every length of drill pipe and every time a formation changes. Keep a detailed drill log indicating the location of the screen and the borehole. When you reach the desired depth, let the rotary head continue to spin and maintain mud circulation to remove all cuttings. If you fail to thoroughly clear the cuttings, the bit may be trapped by the settling of the cuttings when the fluid flow is diverted. Now, place the three-way valve in bypass position to divert the flow of drilling fluid back to the pits. Raise the rotary drive head to allow the slip plate jaws to close around the drill pipe. Now lower the drill head to engage the breakout lugs in the slip jaws. Leave a one inch gap to allow room for the pipe to move down as it unthreads. Reverse the rotary by pushing the valve lever sharply to the reverse direction to allow the swivel stem pin to break out of the drill pipe. The pipe will drop free and into the slip jaws. If the pipe isn't freed, it's an indication that you didn't completely remove all the cuttings from the hole. Apply pipe joint compound to the swivel stem and next drill pipe, then raise the rotary head to within one inch of the top stop. Screw the new pipe into the pipe resting in the slip jaws. Don't completely tighten. Position the swivel stem threads about half an inch above the top of the new pipe. Engage the rotary valve to slowly turn the swivel stem. Align the pipe and swivel stem threads as they start to engage. Just as the top and bottom threads begin to tighten, return to the neutral valve position to stop all movement. Raise the rotary drive head and pipe string so that the slip jaws can be opened. Place the three-way valve in the drilling position. Wait to make sure circulation is re-established and fluid comes out of the borehole, then resume drilling. When the borehole has reached the required depth, you should remove the drill pipe. Allow time for the drilling fluid to circulate and completely clear the hole of cuttings. It is time to remove the pipe from the pilot hole, taking precautions not to drop it down the hole. Place the three-way valve in the bypass position. The mud pump is no longer needed, so you can shut it off. Raise the rotary head and close the slip jaws around the drill pipe. Position the breakout lugs in line with the opening in the slip then lower the rotary head so the larger end of the pipe is at least one inch above the slip jaws. Reverse the rotary by pushing the valve lever sharply in the reverse direction, but do not hold it. Leave no more than an eighth inch gap between the edges of the tool joints. Engage the J-latch. Raise the rotary power head. The slip jaws should remain closed as the pipe rises. When the next joint appears, Quickly open the slip jaws and then close them after the joint passes. Again, raise the rotary head, close the slip jaws, position the breakout lugs, and lower the rotary drive head so that the bottom of the tool joint is one and one half inches above the slip jaws. Reverse the rotary to break out the bottom set of threads. Continue reversing until the bottom pipe drops free and the drill string is suspended in the slip jaws. Disengage the J-latch by lifting and turning. Unscrew, remove, and place the drill pipe back in the rack. Lower the rotary drive head and engage the swivel stem threads into the pipe that remains in the slip. Do not tighten the threads, but leave an eighth inch gap between the tool joints. Make sure the threads are adequately engaged. Engage the J-latch. Repeat the process until the last pipe is pulled. Place a cover over the borehole to protect it from falling objects until the casing is ready to be placed. At this point, the drilling crew prepares the drill to ream the borehole to six inches. First, remove the pilot bit and connect the drill pipe with the reamer and pilot bit. Remove the cover from the borehole, start the mud pump, and divert the mud flow. Wait until circulation is established. The reaming is done the same as drilling the pilot hole. At this point, you are ready to finish off your well by inserting the casing and screen, flushing the well with chlorine, and preparing the area around the hole. You will then develop the well with the baler and pour the pump pad. Finally, clean up your job site and enjoy the fruits of your labor for many years to come.
You've finished your first well. Now it's time to keep your drill in optimal operating condition. With simple preventative maintenance and a basic understanding of troubleshooting procedures, you can maintain your Lone Star drill so it's always ready to keep on digging. First, keep an eye on your grease points to make sure everything stays well lubricated and continues running smoothly. Use grease with molybdenum to lubricate each of the four grease bolts on the LST-1 Plus after every eight hours of operation. Apply the grease through the fittings from the side of the mast, the top and bottom, and the side of the drawworks drive bracket. Be sure to also lubricate the drill pipe threads with pipe joint compound before connecting the pipe. Do not, however, grease the slide pad and rails. Simply keep the UHMW plastic free of dirt and do the same for the drill mast base. Before storing equipment, make sure the drill pipe threads and drill bits also are free of grease and dirt. Following every four hours of operation, check the tightness of the drive chain. If it needs to be tightened, remove one of the pins to open the rotary drive assembly and swing the drive head to the side. Hold the adjustment screw and loosen the locking nut. Next, tighten the adjustment nut until almost all of the slack is removed from the chain. Tighten and adjust the locking nuts. If the chain is dry, clean and lubricate it with a light oil or WD-40 spray. The LST-1 Plus features a load-bearing swivel with a J-latch manual breakout sleeve that will last the life of the rig if you take good care of it. Following the first four hours of operation, add grease at four hour intervals while the unit slowly rotates at 10 RPM or less. Use a grease gun to apply lube to all grease fittings. Pump the gun until you feel resistance, then remove the gun and release the pressure from the swivel and packing by using a sharp object to depress each ball check. Check the bolts on the swivel, hydraulic motor, and J-latch for proper torque every day you use the drill. Refer to the chart in your operator's manual. By remaining vigilant and properly maintaining your Lone Star drill, you'll ensure it runs smoothly for a long time to come. Of course, as with any piece of equipment, you might still have issues from time to time, especially when drilling in challenging terrain. When mud slows or stops coming out of the borehole while drilling, you've lost circulation. The bit might be blocked, or the suction strainer might be clogged, or maybe a hose has a crimp in it. The bit also might be going through a porous formation that's allowing excess mud to escape. Refer to the owner's manual for in-depth instructions on how to remedy the situation. Another problem might be leaking hydraulic oil. Always use a piece of cardboard or wood to search for a leak since the pressurized fluid could penetrate your skin. Tighten or replace the leaking fitting. Torque charts in the owner's manual will give you proper values for the various sizes of fittings and fasteners. From time to time, you'll run into a water leak. If the leak comes from the water swivel, it indicates sand is allowing mud to pass through the seals. If you don't clean them, the seals will slowly disintegrate and you'll need to replace the packing. In extreme cases, you may damage the swivel shaft. A properly greased swivel will help to reduce wear and keep the drill functioning properly. Regardless of the problem, you can fix it with ordinary hand tools. We designed each machine that way to allow quick, easy repairs, no matter how remote a job site might be. Lone Star also stands ready to assist with free service and technical consultations straight from the Livingston, Texas factory. It's personal service to ensure the job gets done the way it should for the people who need it. For more information or questions, contact Lone Star Drills at 1-800-227-7515 or www.lonestardrills.com. For international calls, 1-936-327-3121.